Hi everybody, just a brief video today to look at a workflow that will help us add roadway annotation to our InfraWorks model. Now I made a video like this a while back where we exploited some tools and created a workflow slash strategy that involved exploding some text, the annotations themselves in Civil 3D, exporting those as a geospatial file format, bringing those into InfraWorks and then displaying them as annotation. Today we're look at, going to look at a different strategy or another workflow to accomplish a similar outcome, basically having roadway annotation within our model here. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. I've got a model that's already created in InfraWorks. It was made with Model Builder. So Model Builder successfully brought in for me my surface elevation information, aerial imagery, I've got some road geometry, and if I hover over that geometry, I can see that I've got tooltips that tell me what the, the road names are, as well as where the road name or uh, geometry information was obtained from. So what I would like to do is, rather than rely on these tooltips, I would like to be able to see the road names actually added to as annotation to my model. So to do this, we're going to access the model from Civil 3D and create those annotations. So what I'm going to have to do is we'll go ahead and close InfraWorks here because I won't be able to do that at the same time that I'm in Civil 3D. So we're in a Civil 3D environment. It's just a plain vanilla drawing. The only thing that I've done is I've set my coordinate system such that it's already consistent with my model. So I'm in a state plane uh, projection. And the other thing that I've done is I've created, uh, separate from the defaults, I created an, anna, an annotation style or a label style for my alignments that would just annotate the road names. So that's another thing we don't get out of the box, so I just created a style that would label that as opposed to uh, length or distance or arc, uh, arc length, radius, something like that. So with those two things created, let's go ahead and connect to that model. So we're going to go ahead and open that model up. Let me drag this dialog box down here so we can see. The model that we're going to grab is going to be our East on D model. When it comes in, it's going to tell me what the coordinate system is. It already matches what I have, so we're good to go. Uh, I'm going to designate my area of interest that we'll bring in. We won't do the entire thing for right now. There's a, a black line around the outside that shows the extents of my model. So we're just going to window an area about yeah about the same size. I'm really only interested in the road road geometry because that's what we're going to be annotating. So we'll window that area to lock that down. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to refine my selection set. That the only information I do need to bring in, I don't really care about any of the terrain data. I am going to bring in my roads because you see that that's got the road names. Uh, and then we'll come down, nothing else is going to be applicable. So we'll click on OK. And we'll say Open Model. Brings that geometry in. Let's come up and we'll turn off, using our geolocation, we'll turn off the aerial imagery. Make that a little easier to see. And we see that the geometry that's representing our roads, if we highlight over the top of that, by default, Civil 3D has created those roads as alignments and has automatically passed the name of the road to the alignment from uh, what the information that was contained in InfraWorks. So what we're going to do is now that we've got that annotation style created, let's go ahead and add some annotation here. So we're going to come up annotate, add labels to alignments. We'll say add alignment labels. And we're going to tell it that we would like to do just a uh, single segment. And for my lines, that's the only one that I created. We've got a style here for name. So we'll go ahead and say Add, and then I can start clicking on some of these roadways. So if we click, you see it's automatically adding the label annotation in the, uh, the middle of the road here. We'll go ahead and add this guy as Park. We'll add this one here as uh, Crestwood, Kimberly. Move over onto this side. This is going to be Aberdeen, Park Drive. We'll label this out here. Come over on the other side here. We'll add a couple more labels. All right, Belmoral, uh, Scott, Bannock, all right, Dunbar. So we've got those labeled. For right now, that'll be, uh, that'll be good. Let's maybe label this guy up here as well. We label that. That's a Vista Lane, and maybe we'll label this guy. All right, that actually has a uh, just a 13 designation, so it didn't have an attribute. So I may elect to keep that or get rid of it. That actually isn't the road name. So for right now, we'll just leave it there.
So I've got uh, some road names created. I would go through and create those that I would like to designate within my InfraWorks model. All right, we're going to go ahead and we'll close out of the annotation. The next thing I'm going to do, I have the annotation currently being placed on a layer that's called uh, street names. So just so that you can see that, if we edit that style, we'll come down and look and we can see in general when uh, the text style I called it streets, it's going on to a layer called street names. So I did that so that I could isolate the, uh, the annotation and also a little bit of geometry here. So let's make sure and set that layer current. It, it is right now. But what I want to do is I need to create a couple points in here um, that I can use to align this with my model. So I'm going to use some roadway intersections. I'm just going to use circles for right now because it's quicker. I could create crosses. We'll just create a small circle there at the end of park. We'll create a uh, small circle. We'll hit the up arrow here to go back into the circle command. We'll throw that at the intersection of right here. Okay, and then we'll come down. We'll create a third one here at the uh, intersection at Scott. So we'll throw that at this point. Okay, now I'm just putting this in here quickly. I'm not necessarily worrying about size. Um, I may want to make them bigger or smaller. I may want to make them crosses so that, you know, how they display in the model because they will also display as will the, uh, the geometry. So we just created some quick uh, grip points that we can grab a hold of and, and align this. Once I've done that, we'll go ahead and select the annotation. I'll say select similar, and then I'm going to hit X for explode. It explodes them. They're no longer labels uh, that are associated with my alignments, but they're just text that's floating out in space. From here, I'm going to come in and we'll start getting rid of some geometry I don't need to see. We'll go ahead and freeze the road center lines. We'll freeze the boundary for uh, our model. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and we'll just erase that so that that's out. We see my road names and we see our little markers out in the corner that we'll use to align it. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to plot this. So I'm going to type in plot. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up to plot, as we mentioned before. Uh, we're going to do a DWG to PDF. We're going to do, in this case, we'll say uh, arch Let's see, expand, let's do full bleed. I'm going to do it the biggest that I can. We'll say full bleed 36 by 48. Uh, I'm not going to do display, but instead we'll do window to select the area that we're interested in. That is going to be this area right here. We will say uh, fit to paper is good, preview. We see that uh, those line up on the sheet. That looks good. And... I could also come in here and start tweaking the uh, quality. So by default, if we just leave it at normal, I believe it's uh, well, it's DPI of 100. Let's do custom. We'll do DPI of 300 because as it uh, the resolution, if it gets to be too you know too small, then uh, the image as it gets blown up can get chunky. So we'll leave it at 300 for right now. All of these are variables you could tweak based on the amount of annotation you're creating and the area that it's going to take and cover. So we'll, uh, we'll call this good for right now. We'll click on OK. We'll put this on my desktop in a Tuesday folder. We'll call it roadnamesmodel.pdf. That's fine. We'll say save. It creates the uh, PDF. It's being displayed uh, so we can see what that looks like, and that looks uh, that looks good for now. So what we're going to do next is I've got uh, Photoshop uh, open right now. I'm going to convert that PDF to a PNG file. Now there may be a way that I can print directly to a graphics image, whether that be a JPEG, whatever the case may be. Uh, I chose to go PDF to PNG because it will automatically do the white background as a transparency. So uh, I'm going that route. You may be able to explore directly going to a raster image. Uh, I use PDF because it's vector-based, and then we'll convert it to uh, raster PNG right here. So I've got a version of Photoshop. That's my application of choice to convert it from PDF to P PNG. So we'll go ahead and open, come out to my Tuesday folder. Here is my road names. We'll click on Open. I've got an Import PDF. We'll go ahead and accept the defaults. My resolution is going to be 300 dots per inch. 
We'll click on OK. And you'll see that the what is created is basically the road geometry. The checkered background means the rest of it's transparent. So when it's brought into InfraWorks, the only thing that we'll see is the road geometry or the annotation as well as some of the geometry we created for the tag or the uh, uh, anchor points. And then the rest of it, the white background, that won't show up at all. So that looks good. We'll say Save As, and I'm going to save this to a PNG file format. So we'll come down as one option we have here. Uh, we'll put it in the Tuesday folder. We'll just call it roadnames.png. We'll say save. All right. With that saved, I'll give that a moment. That's done. I'm going to minimize this. Uh, we will bring back open InfraWorks. So I'm going to fire InfraWorks back up. We'll give that a moment to uh, to come back up. When that comes back in, we'll open up our, our model as we were in before. And with that model being open, we'll go ahead and use the terrain overlay to, uh, to go ahead and place our annotation. So we're opening up that model. This is the last one we were in. Okay. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to leverage the concept that anything that can live in this environment can be dragged and dropped in. So here's our road names.png. I'm going to drag that into my model and let go. My dialog box comes up and here's where I can start to configure it. Uh, it's going to be a terrain overlay. I'm going to say interactive placing. And when we go to bring it in, we'll uh, just double pick right here in the middle of the screen. And I'm going to set my scale here to uh, be smaller, we'll say 0.1. I think it normally comes out pretty uh, pretty large, so we'll say interactive placing. Yeah, notice as I move it around, you can see the black text on the screen. So at a, about a 10% size, those uh, pieces of text look pretty good. So I'm just gonna kind of lay those in there and then we'll double click to drop it and say close and refresh. Okay, so I have the text in there now. Actually, I have it in there as my PNG or my, my draped image. So to make it a little bit easier to line this up, I'm going to turn off the imagery that's currently on in the file just so that I can see that. So we'll go ahead, we'll come back over here to uh, Surface Layers. I'm going to go to my standard imagery and I'm going to turn that off. We'll click on OK. And then we see our roads. We see the surface now displayed just as a uh, shades of gray. So we'll zoom up in this area. Here is our Park Street. And we see our ring that we created at the intersection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the um, image. We'll right click and we'll say place by reference points. And now we'll come up and it says double pick within the map here. We'll take and click inside my ring. There's a pick number one. We'll take and move that up to where that should be displayed at the intersection. We'll double pick to drop that. Next point, point number two. Let's pan up into this corner here. Let's see, the other ring we have is up in this area. Let's come up into here. We'll double pick on that to lock onto it. We'll back up that is represented by that intersection right there. So we'll double pick to drop it. And then the third one will come down to the intersection down here. And we can see that guy's already pretty close. So we'll just take and drag him up to where he should be. Double pick to drop it. And when we back up, we see we've got road names or annotation displayed on all the roads in our model. Let's go ahead and turn the the uh, imagery, the aerial imagery back on. We'll click on OK. All right, so our road names are in. We've got annotation dis uh, displayed. It actually, you know, we have to zoom up pretty close for it to even start to break down. It looks pretty good. And one of the huge pros of, of doing annotation this way is it actually displays over the top of the road. If we were to use uh, coverages as what we did in the last workflow, uh, we had to actually display it outside the roadway because the coverages themselves would be would be covered by the road geometry. 
So um, using this methodology to, uh, to bring in annotation allows us to bring it in, display it directly over the roads. Uh, we were able to do a number of different streets in one piece, and we no longer have to rely on the tooltips while we're either working on the model or if I want to start exporting um, a uh, annotation or a still framed image, I can rely on the uh, annotation for my roadways to be displayed as part of those uh, exports. So um, hope this is helpful, and I look forward to uh, talking to you again soon. See ya.